Hello class, welcome to section 15.5. In this last section of chapter 15, we're working on linear correlation, and as you can see, scatter plots, and what's referred to as regression. So it's the last part of the statistics chapter. I'll be examining the, these concepts um, just in their basic forms. So as always, some definitions. Scatter plot, if you're not familiar with them, are a collection of data points, which I'll show you a few <coughs> in a minute. They can be data points that are close together, far apart, and it's going to vary, of course, in the graph. Correlation is what we use to describe the relationship between a number of data points. It also helps to describe the strength and the direction in particular. And we do that with a correlation coefficient usually referred to as R. It's a number that describes, obviously, the strength and direction, and it's between the numbers of negative 1 and 1, and inclusive. And a review, but basically, when it's positive, between 0 and 1, it's, refer it's think of it as a positive slope. Between 0 and negative 1, think of it as a negative slope. The closer it is to 1, or negative 1, the stronger the correlation. And a regression line, also called a line of best fit, the line that goes through as many points as possible, in other words, comes close to, is probably a better way of phrasing it, as many points as possible in a scatter plot, is used in statistical analysis to help give a direction, a specific formula, to direction in a graph. And the way I'm going to have you find regression lines is different from the way that the book does. The book likes to give on page 764 and on page 768 formulas in particular for finding regression lines and finding correla correlational coefficients I'm not as concerned as you if you're using those formulas because they're complex and I'd rather you get the basics down as opposed to getting a very specific number because most calculators can do the same thing for you. So the basic ways of finding a regression line are to plot points on a graph, pick two data points that create a line of best fit based on your own observation, use slope and form the slope formula to find a line of best fit. So, again, this review, look at some scatter plots. Is a common one, just again a collection of data. It can be curved like this, it can be straight like this. Some more examples of scatter plots. Here's another one, and you can see in the middle here is a line of best fit. Down here is the equation y equals negative 12.65x plus 11.6. These are all in slope-intercept form, if you remember that from algebra. So again, back to correlation. As I said, when it's, bet it's between negative 1 and 1, and when it's between 0 and 1, the closer, the closer it is to 1, the stronger we say it is, and it, of course, has positive correlation which means a positive slope. A good, a good uh, kind of rule of thumb to go by is 0.3, again, we're fairly close to 0. It's going to be considered weak. Obviously, anything less than that's considered weak. Still weak positive. Moderate is around 0 0.7, 0 0.6, I'll say. Strong correlation, of course, is 0 0.9, you know, as close as you can get to 1. 1 exactly has a correlation coefficient means that the, the all the points are on a straight line, means there is no variation. That's why uh, 1 is fairly rare when it comes to analyzing st statistical data. Obviously going the other way, between negative 1 and 0, we have negative slope, again, in a linear sense. Closer it is to 0, so negative 0.25, also considered a weak moderate may a negative point two, point seven two I gave you strong run point nines or in this case negative point nines 
And while a lot of that is based on observation, the book, of course, has a very complex formula that can give you a correlation coefficient. And again, most calculators, excuse me, most graphing calculators can do that for you. Again, to review a little bit, slope, the rate that a line increases or decreases, the line in blue, we have, of course, positive slope. The line in red, we have a negative slope. This is a little bit bigger for you. Remember your slope formula? When you have two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, slope is differences in y's over the differences in x. So review. Find the slope between these two points. 4, 8, negative 3, 10. 8 minus 10 over 4 minus negative 3. Or, just do in reverse, 10 minus 8, negative 3 minus negative 4. That's going to be negative 3 minus 4. Either way, you get negative 2 sevenths. And as you can see, depending on how you do it, the negative may be in the numerator or the denominator. It doesn't matter. Usually it's written out in front. They're all the same. Point slope theorem, you may or may not remember from algebra. It's the formula we use to find the equation of a line. If we're given a point and if we're given a slope. So given the point x1 and y1 with the slope m, y minus y1 equals m, minus m times x minus x1. And in a question like this, when you're trying to find the equation of a line or a line of best fit, your final answer is always in the form y equals mx plus b, where m and b are going to be numbers, and x and y just stay x and y. For example, if we know the slope is negative 2 sevenths and the point 4, 8, like we've been doing, find the equation of line, we'll put in 8 in for y1, 4 in for x1. Now I chose 4, 8, and quite often, if we're given two points on a line, when you find the slope, you can choose either point to put into your uh, equation. It doesn't matter. As long as they're both used to find the slope, for example, either one's fine, you'll get the same answer. Some numbers are, of course, easier than others, but again, that's up to you. So here's my setup. Solve for y is what I'm doing. I'll distribute my negative 2 sevenths to get negative 2 sevenths x plus 8 over 7. Solve for y, I'll me, add 8 to both sides. And I'm going to add 8 and 8 over 7. Since they are like terms, I'll need a common denominator. We think of 8 as 8 over 1. And I'll make that 56 over 7. Multiply numerator and denominator by 7. Combine my like terms. And I get 64 sevenths, and that would be my final answer. So again, if I'm talking about finding a line of best fit. And let me sh show you what I'd be looking for. Now the question that I would really, if, if, if it comes to anything from this section, is finding line of best fit. Like I said, if you look at the formula on page 768, very complex. Now of course it will work. It's very similar to a standard deviation formula. It's just a lot of calculations to do. And I would rather you take a more basic approach and just understand what it essentially is getting at. So for example, to find the equation of the line of best fit, I give you something like this. I give you x and y coordinates on the left, and I provide you a grid of some sort. First step would be to plot the points which I did. And there they all are. So you can see from here, this would be like our scatter plot. Obviously we have 
uh, several points. Now, one thing I'm not going to have you do is estimate the correlation coefficient. Uh, again, because without having a calculator in front of you, it can be subjective. So, I'm not going to ask you to estimate that, but I would say this would most likely be considered strong correlation. As you can see, the points are very closely packed. And it'd be positive, since it forms a positive slope if you think of it as a line. Once we plot the points, I would want you to pick points for the regression line. In other words, pick two. Two points that you feel, if I were to draw a line through them, would give you a good correlation, would give you a good line of best fit. In other words, a line that comes as close to as many points as possible. I picked two here that I thought would be a make a good choice. Obviously, there are more. A bad choice would be, for example, maybe choosing these. Obviously, I picked two points, but the graph, excuse me, the line misses most of the points completely. So I consider that a bad choice. Another bad choice may be these two. Even though we get close to several, I'm missing these three considerably. Or, for example, picking these two. It would be another bad choice. But again, here's the ones I chose. So I chose the points 3, 1, and 9, 12. So the first thing I do is find the slope, which comes out to be 11 sixths. Now I'm going to find the line of best fit. So using my formula, I chose the point 3, 1. Again, you could have chosen 9, 12. Doesn't matter. I did my math. And I ended up with. 11 6 x minus 9 halves. And that would be what I'd want you to answer. <clears throat> you just tell me y equals 11 6 x minus 9 halves, and that would be the final answer. So again, from this section, this is the kinds of things that I want you to know. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me, and have a good day.